first session is uh, uh, introduction to archival world. So and see, we are in archival world. So our colleague in this blog from Archives Portal Europe Foundation, from Exarch, from uh, Spain Archives, from Time of Icarus will present what is going on. Well, so my name is Carmen Mateos and I work at the Spanish State Archives in the development of this project, European Digital Treasures, uh, that was born in 2018. And it's a 40 year project. So we are more or less in the middle of the project now. So as Vladka said, it was co-founded by the Creative Europe program of the European Commission. So we received 1 million and a half euros and the global budget of the project is around 3 million euros. So the leader of the, of the project is the Spanish State Archives. This is one of our first meetings. And we managed to build a consortium of seven partners from seven countries that unites a multi-stakeholder team of a state archives, a technological university, and an international network. So here we can see the Master Technological University is a, is a tech uh, partner, the International Network, Icarus, of course, <laughs> and the National Archives, uh, the, the ones of Hungary, Malta, Norway, Portugal, and Spain. So when we were designing the project, uh, we thought, okay, what are our needs of archival holders? So after a lot of thinking, we came up with three main needs. The first of all is uh, the lack of economic return to the sector of the archives, because uh, we have observed that the archives have invested a lot of efforts and a lot of resources during the past decade in digitalizing items and uh, making them accessible in different kinds of portals. But this didn't mean an uh, economic return to the sector. Secondly, we notice a shortage of transnational mobility of exhibitions, works, and professionals, but not only archivists, but also uh, researchers, uh, designers. Um, we notice a lack of uh, um, cross-sectoral exchange. In the third case, uh, we notice an absence of attractiveness for some audiences, when we all know that there are a large group of population that are not uh, acquainted, they, acquainted, they are not familiar with the, with the archives. So we needed to think about project solutions, and we find these three project solutions that are the goals of our project. Uh, first of all, the, we need to find new business models for the European archives in the 21st century. And we need to unlock the profitability and economic sustainability of the, of the archives. Secondly, we need to strengthen the visibility of the national archives towards general audience and remark the protection of the European heritage. And thirdly, we need to reach new target audiences. In this project, we have focused on two groups, the so-called generation Z, so the, the young people, the teenagers and, uh, and young, and the golden ages, uh, people over 60. Okay, so now we're going to have, uh, what have we achieved until now, the March 2021. So we have developed three transmedia exhibitions about the construction of Europe, its size, migratory flows and solidarity, and European discoveries. Secondly, we have hosted an artistic residence and exchange for graphic and industrial designers. Thirdly, we developed an archival literacy online course. We launched a survey among silver researchers and hobbyists. And we elaborate a pan European diagnosis and state of the arts and also an international benchmark of good practices on new business models. So let's start with the transmedia exhibitions. 
Okay, so the participant archives and Icarus uh, worked really hard during 2019 and part of 2020 to select several digital records to create these three exhibitions. Uh, what is the transmedia storytelling? I'm pretty sure that you all know about this, so I will jump over it. <laughs> And the exhibitions will run through Spain, Portugal, Norway, Austria, Malta, and Hungary during 2021 and 2022. The first uh, exhibition will uh, open in uh, Barcelona in the archives of the Crown of Aragon uh, next June. So here are the three exhibitions, transmedia products. And so, well, this is an infographics that you can find in our website, that is uh, digitaltreasures.eu. Most of the information uh, that I have in the presentation, you can find it in, in our website. So we selected 140 documents from 50, 46 archival organizations from 12 countries. It was a huge work. So let's go with the first uh, exhibition, the construction of Europe. Uh, the subtitle for this exhibition is History, Memory, and the Myth of Europeanness over 1,000 Years. The leader of this exhibition is the National Archives of Hungary with the support of Malta. We selected 50 digital records to be displayed. And the exhibition's topic is covered by four pillars. Europe as science, education, and arts. Europe's cultural, religious, and ethnic diversity. Multiple phases of Christianity in Europe heritage of enlightenment, ideas, freedom, and rational. And we can see some examples of the documents that we are uh, showing, like this one, the Mass of St. Olaf from Norway, this Antal Paldraskovic thesis sheet that is wonderful, or the Book of Esther from the Spanish State Archives. The second exhibition is Exiles, Migratory Flows, and Solidarity. The leader is Norway with the support of Icarus, uh, we selected 47 digital records and it's based on four pillars, work-related migration, political uprising, turmoil and persecution, war-related migration and exiles and migratory, migratory flows. And some examples also from this Czechoslovak propaganda poster. This is a, a prohibition of use of gypsies costumes from the National Archives of Portugal or the list of travelers on the Titanic. The third exhibition is European discoveries from the new world to new technologies. The leader is Portugal with the support of Spain. We selected 43 digital records and is based on three pillars, discoveries on medicine and healing, on energy and industrialization, and on transports and navigation. And of course, some examples like this manuscript of Conrad Haas, or the plan of a machine to raise fresh water from the river to Alcázar of Toledo, it's beautiful also, or some X-ray experiments. So concerning transmedia products, we can say that, well, uh, the Master Technological University have designed all these products. Some of them uh, are not finished yet, but we are still, we are still working on some of them. The, the two first, the quiz game and the matching pairs game, uh, are uh, will be available at exhibitions for the visitors to play, and they will be really, really simple for, uh, games. This is like, like a typical uh, multiple choice game. This is a Spanish version, <laughs> and they will be displayed on the scabby and the nets, so visitors could play on this. And matching pearls, it's also very, very easy. Uh, you will have to match tiny little details of the of the documents that will be displayed on, on the exhibition on also in this cabinet. So narrative driven role playing game. So this is a, a game addressed to uh, schoolers and teenagers. And we have a main character uh, called Thomas. <laughs> and we have two levels, the school level and the National Archives level. Uh, the student, Thomas, helped to clean an old wing of the school before demolition. So there, there is a person from the National Archives there. And the student finds all different kinds of media, literature, photos, art. And they find a document of significant importance. So uh, he is invited to the National Archives to uh, learn how the document is restored. 
So in the National Archives, the student must complete tasks for the archivist, which include moving documents or reassembling documents, fighting of microscopic bags, etc. Uh, this is a school. As you can see, the design is very, it's a vintage, very, very 90s. Uh, this is the design of the National Archives, and this is how it looks in the end. This is one of our of the rooms where the archivists work. And this is the entrance of the National Archives. Okay, so the entertainment app, I will let me move this. Uh, it's here. Okay. This one. Okay. The, this is an application that combines education and, and leisure, of course. And it collects the catalogs all from the three exhibitions, but in a very visual way for, uh, for young people. Here you can see the three exhibitions. This is the introduction and the different pillars of the exhibitions. And we can go each by, uh, we can go through all the documents that will be displayed one by one. And also, since it's addressed for, for young people, we have this achievements area. Let's see if it works, okay. So they are receiving research points when they interact with the app. They also have a, a quiz game at the end of each section and they're receiving the stars and they are earning some badges when they are completing uh, the sections. Okay, so we go back to the presentation. This is a demo, <clears throat> but it will be free to download. So augmented reality is really important in, for us uh, in the exhibitions. So we will have several panels like this one with tablets, just in case the visitors don't have a, a smartphone. And we are using this uh, RTB that's a very, very easy technology to use. You download the app that is free and you stand in front of the, of the artwork of the uh, document in this case, and you will have extra information. Like this is just an example because each one of the, of the documents will be different, okay? So let's move to another activity, artistic residences. Okay, so we thought that it was important to develop a merchandising catalog uh, for, for, for the civic exhibition, it just prototype so we can develop it afterwards. So we contacted 12 uh, the designers uh, and uh, they created uh, 50 products. They designed 50 products uh, linked to the three transmedia exhibitions. And we also invited them to take part in an, in an artistic residence in Madrid that took place in February 2009, uh, 2020 to exchange ideas, techniques, and processes and work together. They also visited the different art centers and designed in Spain. Okay, here you can find all the information about this, uh, this activity in our website, but we don't have time to go there now. We have some pictures here. It was a really um, reaching experience for, for everybody. And it was also the Madrid Design Festival, so we visited a lot of design exhibitions. Okay, and here we can see some examples of the work they have done so far. This is a, a piece of bone with a runic alphabet from Norway. And this piece inspired this necklace or this scarf. The seals of this, uh, of this document inspired this magnet or these bottles were inspired by, uh, by the, the machine to raise fresh water from the river to Toledo. Uh, the design of these missile, missiles and cannons uh, inspired this uh, toy rocket for kids with the packaging. Or also this, uh, this uh, hydro android uh, man or machine, it's a costume to walk underwater from the 18th century, inspired this cover for the backpack. All of this aerostatic machine from Portugal inspired these mobiles with the packaging also. So we have this in our website. Uh, let's see here, this product catalog. So you can see here all the catalogs, sorry, all the, uh, all the products designed by the, by the designers with their names and the documents that inspired them. 
So it's very interesting. I strongly recommend you to, to, to visit it. Okay, so let's move to the archival literacy online course. This is like a jewel for us. <laughs> Uh, it's targeted to general generation and offer sustainable and attractive tool with clear learning objectives uh, linked to education of the young adults. Its main topics is how to use archives, archival collections, databases, etc. It was developed throughout 2020 and was tested by 35 professors from all around Europe. And now we are promoting it uh, and testing it and it's launched in English and also in Spanish. Uh, if you're interested, uh, we are uh, we are having a, a webinar uh, on the 6th of May. I'm pretty sure that uh, Icarus will send you the information. And also, I must say that it's, this is completely free. So you can register and see how it works. We can have just a, a look of it. Uh, it's here. OK, it's based on three models, archives, uh, the first model will respond to the highlight will respond to highlight the importance of the archives and how to use them. The second module will be more practical and targeted at learners, and the third one will offer teachers a collection of resources based on three uh, topics: pandemic and epidemics, economic crisis, and migration. So we don't have time to go further into this, but it's uh, it's uh, really interesting. I strongly recommend you to, to visit it. So let's move to another activity, survey to target older silver generation. So we, the main aim was to identify pan-European joint fields of interest and the specific needs of this, uh, of this generation, that they are retired, but they are very active and they are active users of the, of the archives. So we received 889 validated responses uh, from Hungary, Norway, Austria, Portugal, Malta, Germany, Switzerland, and Spain. You can find the report on our website, uh, but the main results, we can see here. Uh, senior users are eminently male, 70%. 60% of them uh, have university studies, history, education, and public administration, mostly. Their motivation to visit the archives uh, is, are to conduct family history, in first uh, place, personal and professional research on second place. 70% uh, of the respondents, respondents sorry, have been using the archives for more than three years. Uh, the overall satisfaction with archives infrastructures and services are really high. Uh, they have a reward from visiting the archives that is accomplish information needs, but also personal satisfaction and leisure are important to them. So senior users claim for digital and technological modernization of the archives. It's really important. And the uh, aspects that they find more interesting are the professionality of the staff, the increasing digitalization of the collections, and the quality of the heritage. And just finishing, 50% of them uh, good collaborating projects of local history, followed by indexing, scanning, and transcribing projects. With this information, I must say that we now are developing a crowd south, crowd southern uh, activity now. That it's going to be really, really interesting. Okay, so finally, we uh, elaborated these two reports with the help of some experts. And since we needed uh, to have um, one of our key objectives, it was to generate a greater added value, profitability, visibility, economic return of the archives through the identification and implementation of new business models, we needed to know what uh, was the current situation of the sector regarding this, uh, this subject. So we elaborated this pan-European diagnosis and state of the arts. Uh, I think I don't have much time now, so I will go through it very fast. Uh, we gathered data for 42 institutions on uh, legal structure, finances, key resources, distribution channel, digitization policy, customer data, communication, et cetera. And it's really interesting. And you can see the report in our website, on our website. I will jump over the conclusions and recommendations. 
and the international benchmark, um, we needed to identify good practices and new trends in the management of cultural institutions in order to be able to assess their potential and implementation towards the archive sub subsector. So we identified 37 good practices uh, covering different uh, topics. And uh, I recommend, that you, recommend that you have a look on them because some of them are very, very inspiring. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, you can write to us or visit our website. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carmen. It was really inspiring. I was uh, tracking this project for the years for Icarus uh, conferences, and it's great. I think every time it's more and more, and it's great. I have to say we, we published article in, in Icarus Croatia magazine archive in last issue. So also Croatian public and those within Croatian, you can find materials and we already negotiating how to join and to, to implement some of these activities in, in Croatia and in our activities. So I think it's really great and, and that there are many space for cooperation here.